Hey guys, Retarnik here, and this is a special episode for Radio Signal, where I show basically the last two endings. Um, because I really wanted to know what the, the ending basement is, and um, I may have done a bit of research on how to get ending six. And it was it was pretty hidden, and I I didn't think of it because I was too busy trying to find out the right way, and then I remembered. Um, there's an open door here when navigating. Let's see what's in here, huh? I'll even unmute him. What have you done? That wasn't the right door. Oh. Oh. Get out of there, quick. Oh, God. Oh. Ooh. Ah. One of the patients caught you. Oh. And now they'll tear you apart. I guess this is as far as we go together. It's been a pleasure, friend. I hope the pain doesn't last for much longer. I really oh. hope it doesn't. Oh, God. Oh, I don't need to hear that sound again. But that's ending six. With only one more after this. The one I've been ex excited about. But no, I don't want to continue. I don't want to restart because that's past the basement. Hello? I'm just going to mute you again and get back to the basement. And here we are. So now, we just have to go down. Thing is. Come on. It's open. Here we go. Let's see what is in here. I'm really excited. Though. So... Oh. Who... Who are you? Hello there. My name is Via, lead developer and writer of the game you just played. If you're here, that means you watched all, all of the endings. First of all, thank you for playing this far. This is the last I managed to cram into the game, so after this, you would have seen all the content it has to offer. I'm writing, I'm actually writing this about 4 hours before my deadline hits, I think. So I'm sorry if it, if it reads a bit awkward. The idea for Radio Signal came from a short story I once wrote. It's about a man who breaks into a suburban house at night, looking for a mysterious something to steal. He is guided by the person who talks to him through a radio and guides him through the house. Just like in Radio Signal, the narrator was the person in the radio who spoke directly to the protagonist. It was an idea that I liked and wanted to expand upon. In fact, the first time I did this was in my first was in my last game, Don't Open Your Eyes, which, if you watched my previous videos, you would have seen, and it's just as good of a story if I say so myself. There was something fun about a story that so told solely through a person or entity talking to another. Anyway, I hope I did this concept justice, and I'd say you did. I really like this game, and the previous one too. The biggest change is that the setting here is a hospital instead of a house. The background images came from a former psychiatry psychiatric ward on Felix Bolness Hospital. Chile. It was abandoned after an earthquake from a few years ago, and I'm not sure it exists anymore. There's a, there's a nice bit of trivia for you. Turning Radio Signal into a visual novel gave me the freedom to play around with other ideas. Stuff such as the idea to allow the player and reader to explore the area and not choose whether to obey the voice or not. But truth be told, there was a lot I couldn't do due to the time constraints. Initially, I wanted to dedicate more time to exploring the building. But other than a few instances, I couldn't deviate much from the intended path. Same thing happened with the chase segments. I wanted to add a bit more variety to them, but I simply didn't have the time. By the way, did you notice you could mute the voice at any time after playing one of the main endings? One other game had I had was this that I had was to add small portions of text throughout this game you could only read if you had the voice muted. I 
They would have given a bit more context about the hospital, the first sin that chases you in the voice. But again, time got in the way, deadlines on the true horror here. And besides, trying to explain in too much detail is always a mistake when it comes to horror. Yeah, it is. Gord horror works best when it loses a little bit of mystery and remains. When you don't quite know exactly what's going on and that's what makes it scary, basically the fear of the unknown. If you know exactly what's happening and what's gonna happen, why is why what is happening, how it's happening, then it's not scary. I'm always a bit disappointed when horror films, games, and literature reveal every single detail about the monsters. Like it's fine to have a lore, but usually when it comes to like detail lore, you do that after the story. Or you, you try and keep it separate from the actual story and whatnot. Sometimes it's best to leave something to the imagination. Just like good fiction in general, it's better when certain elements are left to the reader's interpretation. Such as the case with the voice. In the original story I wrote, it was revealed that the protagonist had been talking to himself the whole time, berating himself for his every action. In Radio Signal, there is no such conclusion. Was the voice real? And if so, did it belong to, the, to a real person or to something else entirely? A monster? As, he eventually, as he's eventually called. I do have my own preferred answer, but I'll let you people reach your own. What I can talk about is the idea or theme that inspired me to write. And for my sake, um, I will say that the voice is just a mental thing. It's all... It's all in the head, just like with, just like with how he said in his book, but it was, a, it was still a separate voice just in his head and it was being, um, personified through the radio. It's a simple thing. I wanted to write a story about a person who's bad, but not because they were born bad, but because they were led to, to believe they were. I'm a firm believer that our environment shapes our behavior and I believe that too. Poverty, abuse, priest brutality, and government that don't look for you. These aspects of society logically create people who can't, who simply can't escape becoming bad. And this same society won't try to help them and will instead reinforce the idea that these people must continue to be punished to justify just how broken the system is. The protagonists in this story had the chance to free themselves from this voice who kept that kept telling him he was bad a lot of people don't see that going ha don't have this chance but i truly hope this chance i i truly hope this changes somewhat in the future i think i kept going back to the topic of self-loathing in the stuff i write and i imagine i showed it in the story very well yes you you definitely did especially with how i interpret the voice it's really strong self-loathing whoops that ended up being longer than expected i'll quickly wrap this up radio signal was made in 30 days with a spooktober um vn space game jam interesting i got help from various people for the art and voice audio aspects but i still had to tinker with the gui and background images a lot by myself but such is the grind of making these games and i'll keep it for the time being I'll keep at it for the time being. I'm planning to release a new horror-themed visual novel soon. This one won't be voiced, and I'll have a slightly different style, but I hope you enjoy it nonetheless, and I will be sure to check it out when it comes out, and be, be on the lookout for that when I post a video about it when he does release it. Follow my Twitter for news on Mada yada yada. Thank you for listening to my rentals, and thank you for playing Radio Signal. Hopefully, we see each other again soon. Goodbye. That was really nice. I really like that. This whole game was great. I love that. I love good visual novels. Basement. That's all the endings. And that's it. This is the last video I'll probably make a radio signal. I'll probably no, I definitely won't. This is definitely the last video I'll make a radio signal. There's nothing else to really do. And thank you guys so much for watching. Um don't forget to like, subscribe, turn on the bell, and leave a comment. All of those things I'll be ever so grateful for and appreciate very much. See you in the next video.
Bye-bye.